Good evening. Our opening song is number 323, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and we'll be singing verses 3 and 4. Good afternoon. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Let us call to mind our sin and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double all, for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, 
and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him. 
at peace. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. And as, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole of Judean countryside and all of the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locust and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello. Just, we're about halfway through Advent, not liturgically, but like on the calendar wise. So just a reminder that, just this is a commercial break here, that fourth Sunday of Advent, remember it's a special uh, schedule because it happens also to be uh, Christmas Eve. So just a reminder that that last weekend, the fourth weekend of Advent, evening mass here is like normal on Saturday, but that Sunday, it's eight o'clock Jamestown, 10 o'clock here. Repeat after me. 8 o'clock Jamestown, 10 o'clock here, the morning of December 24th. So there's a little schedule change. Just want to drive that home. So people aren't coming here at the wrong time. Where's Mass, Father? It was earlier. So anyway, so just want to just drive that point home so we're all on the same page. Okay, so homily time. So this, this, this church year is the year of St. Mark, and we um, we'll read through Mark throughout this entire church year, which will go to the next, um, next Christ the King Advent season. And so Mark is, um, just a little bit about Mark, because we, I say this because we started off with the gospel today, with the beginning of Mark's gospel. Mark is unique among the, the gospels. Actually, they all have their own character, but Mark is really my favorite gospel. We'll explore that this year. Luke's gospel is beautiful for its parables. You know, Luke is writing from the perspective of, we think, the Blessed Virgin Mary. So he would have known so many things about her life and the young and the youth of Jesus, the, the young age of Jesus, through talking to mom. And so he would have had coffee with mom and learned about all these things um, about the Lord's life. So we really get this glimpse of Jesus through the eyes of his mom in Luke's gospel, and it's, it's beautiful. Matthew's is, is just, is, is, is crystal clear with teaching. Like, it, it's refreshing because th there's a lot of truth in there, a lot of teaching and preaching and understanding, like, what the Lord is really all about. We have the famous Sermon on the Mount. He's, like, the, 
Vinu Moses giving us a new law in the gospel. It's very didactic. He's teaching and instructing. It's just refreshing to kind of learn a lot of theology from the voice and the mouth of God. That's Matthew. John is a whole different beast. Like the Lord is just walking 10 feet off the ground, and it really is the foundation of the mystical theology of both the church and of Christ. But Mark's is a little bit different. Mark's really is one of great, of great hiddenness and secrets and darkness. Not bad secrets, not bad hiddenness, not bad darkness, but what happens whenever the Lord is so sure of himself, so believes in the mission, that these things naturally happen. Like, for instance, I won't do everything because we wouldn't do that this whole, whole year, but Mark's gospel begins with the public ministry, his baptism. We get no genealogy. We can know in the beginning was the word. There's no, you know, birth of Jesus. There's no infancy. There's no young age. There's no magi. There's none of that. The first 30 odd years are just gone. It's mystery. It's hidden. It's not for us to see or hear. I mean, look at the end of Mark's gospel, and from the resurrection to the ascension is like 12 verses. It, if you read it, it sounds like that happens before breakfast on Easter, like the ascension and everything. Those 40 days could happen before breakfast. There's so little that happens post-resurrection and post-birth and pre-baptism in Mark's gospel. Because Mark isn't concerned about these things that were hidden from most of us. Most did not see the birth. Most did not see the resurrection. And so he's not talking about those things that you and I didn't see. Talking about the public ministry and what our Lord was really all about. But also in Mark's gospel, our Lord will be very secretive about who he is. He'll run off a lot and hide and pray and be alone and away from the crowds. That our Lord kind of has this, like this introversion to him, this secrecy, this mysticism to him that no one can really understand. And we'll kind of discover that this year. But in thinking about the kind of the context of our Lord in Mark's gospel, it reminds me of my homily last week and what I think Advent can be about. The last week we looked at the idea that, that in all of our lives exists a darkness. In all of our lives exists darkness of sin or fear or loss or grief or tragedy, heartbreak, whatever it is. We all have those darknesses and they're real. But we also talked about realizing that we're not just darkness, we're defined by the light. And the light is coming into the world into our lives. We ought to define ourselves by that light because that's truly who we are, sons and daughters of the Father, illumined and filled with light. But also what happens then, if we do those things, we kind of become like a black and white photograph. Stay with me. If, you're, if you look at a black and white photograph or watch a black and white film, you kind of have to do a little reminder to yourself that they weren't seeing in black and white. They saw and lived in color. When we look back at them, back at the photos or back at the film, we see the colorlessness. We see the black and white. We don't get the color that they saw and experienced because we weren't there. And this, in a way, not ours to see, not ours to experience. We have our own color our own light. And if we hold on to the light, to the world, we become like a black and white photograph. We become like our Lord in Mark's gospel. We become hidden, a little colorless, a little dark, a little mysterious, that the world will not understand us. It won't see us for being filled with light because it doesn't see that way. From the perspective of the world, we're like black and white, we're colorless, we're hidden. We're dark, mysterious. What is this Christian doing? Why are they living this way? Why do they love this way? Why do they forgive this way? Why do they worship this way? Why do they serve this way? Why do they lay down their lives this way? It's like it's foreign. 
It doesn't make sense. We can't, they can't fully see it. And that's the point. The more we lean into the light and define ourselves by the light, the world in darkness will only see darkness. We'll only see the black and white. They won't see our light. They won't see the color that illumines our lives because they aren't there. The world is fallen. The world is broken. Hence the need for all that we do. And so as we continue to realize that darkness is real, but we're defined by the light, the more that we hold on to that and define ourselves by that and lean into that light, define our whole lives by the light of Christ and is coming into our life, that we become like a black and white photo. We're just not fully seen by the world. And that's okay. The Lord will go off and pray often. He'll make people hush, not tell them who he really is because they won't understand. And that's okay. He still loves. He still saves. He's still God. He's still Jesus. He'll still do all that he has to do. But he's not doing it so the world will, will, will agree with him or applaud him. He does it for, our, for love of us. May we do all that we do for love of God and love of neighbor. Nothing else matters. And the more that we live that way and lean into those, those ideals and aspirations, the more hidden we'll be from the world, the more misunderstood we'll be, the more black and white we can be. And that's okay, because we're serving him, we're loving him, we're worshiping him, we're being filled with him, and one day we're gonna dwell with him forever. That's the good news. That's the promise. That's why, why we do what we do, what we live for. And we persevere in that this Advent season until all of us finish this journey. Let's persevere in that. And one day we join all of us in heaven as saints. I love you. Let's do now and um, uh, profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, and God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things for us men, for our salvation, he came down from him, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Present now our prayers to our Heavenly Father. The response will be sung. For the renewal of the church, that the Lord may sanctify her during his holy season of Advent, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. For our nation, that the Lord may guide the minds of those who govern in order to promote the common good and assure justice for all. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. For our parish community, that the Lord may draw us together in and through the sacramental life of the church. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. 
come. For increase of vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life, and that all the faithful may work to spread the good news of Jesus in charity and truth. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. That the sick may be comforted and healed and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Stephanie Romine, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for Helen Delavecchia, who died this week. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Heavenly God, we come before you this day with faith, knowing you hear and answer all prayers according to your will. And as our Lord, when he was filled with, filled with light in Mark's gospel, became hidden, mysterious, misunderstood, May we be comfortable with, with that destiny as we embrace the light that you pour into us. May we be okay with being misunderstood or hidden or mysterious in the eyes of the world, for we are close to you and not sin. But may we, in, in, that, in that separation, reach out to the world to help them see the light that God puts into their hearts so that through each of us, living in the light and sharing and extending that light to others, may truly build and be the church, and one day the saints in paradise. And we ask all of these things confidently through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for the preparation of gifts is number 334, Creator of the Stars of Night. for eternity. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty and merciful God, may no wrong prayer. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, since we have no merits to plead our cause. Come, we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For he assumed as first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your praises without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The story of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we
to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should 
to enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ only say for eternal life. Our song for communion is number 827, Taste and See.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder again, just those mass times in two weeks, last week in two weeks, okay? And then just Rochelle's out there with uh, raffle tickets and scripts, so please support the school through those and uh, have a super duper week. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the Almighty God, who by grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you now by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of the present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 344 on Jordan's Bank. On Jordan's bank the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings the tidings of the King of Kings. Then cleanse me every heart from sin, make straight the Sets his people free.